Welcome back. We are Nikki and Kevin and our Border Terrier Charlie. In March this year, we moved into our camper van, Nelly. Good morning. Bit of a different video for you this week because we are staying here in Stoke Gabriel for a while in the same place. You're laughing at me. And uh, we thought we'd give you a bit of a van tour. As well as a tour of our van Nelly this week, we give you a bit of a run around Stoke Gabriel before we leave the beautiful village here in the South Hams and we show off Nikki's culinary skills. What's the problem, Nikki? <laughs> so once we decided we were moving into Nelly, but we knew for several weeks, months even, we'd have to mostly stay in the area, we couldn't resist the beautiful campsite at Stoke Gabriel called Hiawar Farm. Um, a, because it's local enough for our other commitments, and B, because it's such a beautiful village. <laughs> and if, like us, you enjoy running or walking in the countryside, what better place to come? We didn't look at the tides before we came out. We've both got pretty fond memories here, haven't we? Yeah, we certainly have, yeah. Together? Yeah, and uh, used to come here with my late father, we used to come kayaking. Um, so yeah, every time I come down here I do think of him. And uh, yeah, paddle boarding and uh, 2016 I learnt to swim and did the river dart 10k swim. Um, and I uh, enjoyed every minute and went back and did it the next year, didn't I? Yeah. She did. So, yeah, she smashed it. Experience. Ten kilometres. Top nice. Did she come over there? Yeah, and I like to sail here. As a child, having moved here from Coventry, and you taught me to kayak here. I did. I did. Yes. <laughs> I haven't. Um, I haven't decided to to uh, have a go paddleboarding with you though. No. No. I think that's pushing it a bit. Oh, I you? Fall in a lot. Yeah. So this is the heart of the village. Um, a couple of little shops, the post office and the general stores, a couple of pubs and uh, the church behind. about me seven times round for all to see stumble not and then for certain one true wish will come to be like to point out this is a two-day meal because heaven forbid anyone think that we're gluttonous. So in our previous 
two jobs. Um, I drove a taxi and Nikki worked in a shop. So we didn't feel we could have the amount of garlic we enjoy. And now it's just each other in the van. We can have as much garlic as we like. So these are the burgers we bought uh, last week in the angry Tesco's in Minehead. We don't really know what they are. What do we think they are, Nikki? I think they're lentil burgers. So the van itself is a 2016 extra long wheelbase Fiat Ducato, but it was kitted out by Autotrail or Trigano, and it's actually a Tribute T680 for those that are interested in those things. So uh, as for the van cab, it's no different to if you bought a builder's van extra long wheelbase. It's got the standard 2.3 litre diesel engine, uh, six-speed gearbox. The cab itself has air conditioning, although the van doesn't. And uh, there really isn't much else to tell you about the cab, but it's lovely this to is drive. This our kitchen area. It's quite small, very compact, but I think for us there is plenty of space. So we've got three drawers here that slide out. Oh, bit full. There we go. And with a the lock there. We have a sink here and a two ring gas burner. Small cutlery drawer. And we have a Thetford oven and grill. The oven's really, really good. The grill is, it's okay, but it's quite small. Um, but yeah, I really, I really rate the oven, I have to say. Under here, I've got storage. This is where I keep our plates. Um, we actually went for some melamine plates, which have been brilliant. And obviously a couple of tiny ones there. Okay, um, overhead here, we have a storage cupboard there. All our coffee, jars, all go in there. So there's plenty of space there. Um, one of the absolute game changers for us was these wire baskets, which you'll see throughout the van. Um, I think they're four ninety nine from Poundland. They they have been a, a game changer. So washing up liquid and cloths and everything can go on there. So here we have more storage. So I've got pans in there. And what I did buy was I bought this set of pans. Um, the T fell pans with the the one handle, which is just perfect. So here's our fridge. It's not massive, but it's big enough for us. And um, we've got a little freezer compartment. And so here we had a wardrobe um, with a, a pull-out rail. Uh, but we felt that we, did, we didn't need a wardrobe and really we wanted more space, more um, cooking space, more storage space. So instead of shelving it, I actually bought storage crates. So as you can see, 
if I've got three storage crates in there and they all stack on top of each other. Being vegans, we had a lot of um, spices, herbs and spices. And there's no way that I could have brought any of that with us. So I bought these, which have been absolutely brilliant. So in here, we've also got uh, bottles of sparkling water and we keep our juice. And also we've got a little folding table which we can use either outside or on the bed so with the rail from the wardrobe we fitted it to the ceiling of the shower and toilet room and we hang just small bits off of here nothing sort of too heavy so this is our shower and toilet and wash hand basin And as you can see, I've got more baskets there and also we've got storage space in there as well. So the van is actually two single beds and there's a foam insert in the middle. Um, this will come up later on when we'll take, take the bed apart and, and show you um, how it's all fixed together. But what we have got under here is we've got more storage. We've got two drawers there and the storage, because we've elected to have the double bed, goes right the way back. Um, so I've actually got an 88 key piano in there. Um, I've also got my cleaning stuff and all my laundry stuff, and piano books, a little bit of storage there. So in the back here, we've got um, more cupboard space. So we've got cupboards, the four cupboards there. I also bought these packing cubes, so all our clothes go in these, which these have been absolutely brilliant. We've also got storage here in the back that goes all the way along and little pockets there as well. And obviously the baskets. So this is our lounge dining area. It's also Charlie's bedroom. So you can see his baskets under the table. So Charlie sleeps on here in the evenings and during the day as well, um, he'll sit on here. When we bought the van, we found that Charlie was really anxious and he'd be wandering up and down and just wouldn't settle. Um, also, we were conscious that we probably weren't traveling legally with him. Um, so we went to one of the local pet stores and they recommended this harness um so he's actually strapped into if you can see he's actually strapped into the seat belt there so, so charlie as you can see has now just settled down and um, he's he's no longer anxious he's calm and yeah he's really relaxed on here and also it gives us peace of mind as well so as you can see, we've got quite a big table here. It also pulls back. So when we've got the captain's chairs turned round and we're driving, we can actually pull the table back to give us more room at the front. Although when we're driving, um, Charlie does actually like to sit up and it gives him a bit more space as well. This table pulls out, so that gives us additional dining space. And so far we've had three people in here for dinner. The van did come with a TV and there is a TV bracket there, but we actually took, took the TV out. We just don't bother with it. Uh, we've got storage up here for all our games and bits and pieces. We've also got additional storage up here, which actually goes, goes right back. And there is more storage under the bench as well, um, which Kevin will take the bench seat off and, and show you and there is a little bit of storage underneath here so the business end of things in here we have so I keep in here our solutions so we have a grey waste solution so the grey waste which is the sink and shower and uh, the kitchen sink 
and make sure that does not too smelly. We use Aquasol as a little additive in the water just to help us be more confident that it's not going to poison us. I keep some rubber gloves and toilet roll in here and we use the organic in our cassette. So the cassette for those that don't caravan or motorhome, that is actually underneath the toilet and literally collects our human waste. And uh, I just uh, literally take the and uh, go and empty it in the point on the campsite. Also on this side of the van, we have the electric hookup plug-in point. So on this campsite, we simply run our own lead to here and we have access to the campsite's electricity, which is brilliant. But see next week's video for a bit of an upgrade to this van that will render this a lot less important to us. Still on this side of the van, this is the vent for the boiler. So the Truma boiler works on either gas or electric when it's working on gas. This is its exhaust vent. This window here, this window's got a clever security magnet on it. So if we're running the boiler on gas, it will cut the boiler out if you open this window so the exhaust fumes can't go in. A little safety tip. And also on this side of the van, finally, this is our cap covering our water inlet. I know this is absolutely fascinating, but it is important. This van carries 70 litres of fresh water, which you fill in here. The boiler that we talked about, which is under the seat, we'll show you in a bit. The boiler has capacity to hold 10 litres of hot water, which it heats up, which means we can have our little shower in there. So, we've talked about the toilet waste, we've talked about the fresh water. The grey waste water is an underslung tank and it's got quite a crude system for emptying it. It's got a handle here. And when you pull that, there's an outlet in the middle of the van all the way under there. Which releases the grey water. We use a collapsible bucket most of the time to empty that when a few trips to a drain. Um, this campsite's really good. It's got a drive over grey waste emptying point. So you can just drive down, open the drain cover and open your tap. Above my head here, so this is above the passenger seat, we have the control for the boiler and the control for the van electrics. This one controls the all the 12 volt system. We've got a water pump, we've got an outside light there, all the other lights. We can get the temperature inside the van, how full the water tank is, how full the grey waste tank is, the state of the batteries, and then we can turn the 12 volt system off. And this one is a control panel for the boiler, which is under the seat. Um, and here you can control what fuel you use, you can use electric or a mixture, or you can use just gas. And you can control temperature, fan, whether it's heating water, etc., etc. It's really, really good, and we've found it absolutely perfect for us. So here we are in the back of the van. Um, start with this middle bit here. You saw this from the other end, so that's Nikki's piano. We have attached to this wall of this cupboard, we have the uh, the winder and the stands for the awning. So what we've got here is the gas cupboard. And we've got the gas low refillable system, which means you don't need to change the bottles, you just use this tap here to fill them up. This floor is vented, so that means we keep um, any running shoes, cycling equipment, etc., that might get damp or a little bit smelly in the vented cupboard. This cupboard here is sort of a tool cupboard. So I've got my toolbox, I've got a little uh, battery drill, we've got cycling tools, the high visits that would need to be legal abroad if we get out the van, we've got an extension lead for the electric hookup, 
Um, I've got one of those flat hoses there and the extra lot for the bikes if we're leaving them unattended. Under here, we have an enormous space. I can barely reach the back of it. Let me spin you round. And I'll now give you a demonstration of what we keep in here. A collapsible ladder. The foil coat that sits across the windscreen to keep us warm or cool and stop condensation. Poor old Charlie, our dog, is quite old, so we have a buggy for pushing him. And a couple of extra security devices, which we either use for locking the steering wheel on the clutch, or we can beat people with them. And two lovely collapsible chairs, which every time Nicky gets them out, it rains. We've got loads of natural light in Nelly. We've got the skylight here that has blinds that, that go across. We've also got the insect blind as well. All the windows also have blackout blinds and also the insect blinds as well. And the cab is also uh, fitted with blackout blinds. Right, so this is our bed setup. We've got two single mattresses on either side and we've got the wooden slats down the middle and this foam goes into the middle here. Unfortunately, it's a bit um, and it's, it's too high. Um, not quite sure yet what we're going to do about it. We might have the foam cut down or we might find a different solution. So as you can see underneath, we've got quite a bit of storage. So under here, we've got, I mean, I've got shoes, we've got winter coats, we've got our rucksacks. There's loads of storage there. And on this side, we've got yet more storage. We've got the tank here and over the top of the tank yet more storage underneath the bench seat here in our dining area so in there we have the truma boiler which um, can heat the van by blowing hot air around it using either electricity or gas and we have our battery set up our solar controller. On our roof we have a television area which is now obsolete because we've taken the television out and we have 215 watts in total of solar panel. We found van tours on YouTube invaluable when looking for vans. We hope you found our tour of Nelly just as useful. If you enjoyed this video give us a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing. Join us next week when we take Nelly to see the sunset on Dartmoor. We wake up on an industrial estate, have a history lesson in Plymouth and discover more of the South West Coast Bath.